<laughs> so somebody has the bright idea to take a car that has one and a half gears and drive it to Tucson, Arizona, which is about 1,800 miles, to roadkill's zip tie drags. So yeah, that's why the transmission's behind me because we got a 4L60E to rebuild and then do some legitimate burnouts and get on the road to zip tie drags. All right, so the first thing we're gonna start with is we're gonna remove this bell housing. So here's the first purchase you're gonna have to make if you don't have one. You're gonna need a Torx Plus 50 bit, which is a little bit fatter. Oh, that's not good. I'm very close to basically just destroying this head. Sometimes a little bit of heat goes a long way. All right, let's try this again. Try to beat this thing on there. Oh, here we go. Oh, man. There it goes. Great. Well, let's at least get some of these other ones out. Why couldn't you be like your brother, huh? So, yeah, that's it. Just the one. So, I have to do some magic tricks here. Is this how this trans is going to treat me? Here's time. Oh, man. That is just destroyed. I am so screwed. <laughs> so, I got two options at this point. I can either A grind on that bolt head or b take this bolt grind it down a little bit jam it in there weld it on there <sighs> it is what it is it's just it's just how it goes you know wow this is priceless well i guess i gotta go out and get some grade eight bolts because watch this <laughs> yeah that was pointless <laughs> so moving along oh man are we off to a rough start this actually isn't the original pan. This is the one off the truck transmission. I end up having to swap a couple parts like the extension housing, the pan, this shifter deal. I've obviously been inside this trans before. The other thing I got to do is remove this 2-4 servo cover and all of its guts. Boom. Very simple. That's out. Now we just kind of slowly pry. And my buddy, Tony, is providing the music right now. Or cut, because this thing does get caught up on it. So, let's see what we can do here. So this is what we got here. Now this piece, this guy, the little O-ring. Now, when you're pulling some of this stuff apart, I would keep it all together exactly how it's supposed to go. Just gonna make your life a lot simpler. All right, so we got that done. Turn this thing around. So with that out of the way, I'm gonna undo this entire wiring harness, being careful not to break it, but it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna replace all of this brake stuff. There we go. Okay, don't do what I just did. But like I said, I'm replacing all this stuff. So, I don't care. I'll push this tab down. So you gotta remove this guy. And that will give you access to push this thing out. But then also, you have to undo this bolt, which is loose, because I knew this thing was gonna be getting torn apart. So there goes that piece. So like I said, just try to put everything back together as much as you can. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. It's gonna be less questions later on. I guess we're at the point where we can start undoing all these bolts and get this all freed up. Okay, so those were tens, these two are eights. So there you are, there's that piece. So I'm guessing this is all gonna be a combination of 10 millimeter and eight millimeter.
spring loaded. Okay, there's this assembly. We'll deal with all these assemblies later. For now, we're just trying to take the bulk of it apart. All right, valve body coming off. Hey, bye bye check ball. Okay, let's get this harness out of the way. Now I'll show you in the schematic here where all these check balls go. I think I'm just gonna remove this whole piece. That way I can reference where I need to put what. I'll throw the schematic up to show you guys where these are supposed to be. You can never have too much reference material. So this is actually a pretty decent book. It covers a lot of stuff, disassembly, reassembly, things to look out for. And this one is just kind of like the updated book for the later models of the uh, 4L60E. I'm really curious to see if the sun shell is broken in this thing. But those are very notorious and breaking. Never simple. I'd bust a classic garage. So I'm removing this piece. These bolts took a 13 millimeter. Okay. Boom, got that out of the way. Now I'm gonna remove the 3-4 accumulator piston. Usually these just pop out, but I kinda wiggle the pin out and I can pull this whole thing out. All right, cool, there's that. This is actually off of that Suburban from the junkyard. So this is actually not gonna be put back on because I'm gonna have to swap the one from the Trans Am because it has those torque arm mounts. So, let's get this off. Dude, this gun, this gun rocks. Oh my God. I might have to talk to the Mac guy. Cool. All right, there's that. It's the next day. I got some grade eight bolts. So hopefully we can weld this guy in there and get that freaking bolt out. Wish me luck. Here goes nothing. Yeah, baby! <laughs> Dude, mint. So bell housing off here is my contraption basically i just bought a grade eight bolt ground it down stuck it in the hole and welded it as best as i could with a lincoln 140 mig now i also did heat up the aluminum and i did hit it with a hammer a couple times just to kind of loosen things up but it worked so now we can move on to the next step the pump takes a 13 millimeter All right, so I'm gonna pull off this O-ring. Moving along, the SD card got filled up, so I ended up having to switch one. So, this thing is almost out, there we go. All right, cool. There we go. So I just released the band. I should be able to pull this assembly out now. So moving along, there's a snap ring all the way at the end there that we're going to have to remove and that will release the planetary gears. I will say this much, tools make all the difference and getting this snap ring out with these pliers, complete nightmare. So I might get on the Mac truck tomorrow and buy a legitimate pair. All right, planetary gear is coming out. I'll have to check those out, see what the tolerance on those is. Here's the planetary housing. All the teeth seem like they're in order. Bearing races look not too bad. Right, so put that assembly off to the side. 
sun shot down. Wow, okay. This thing is still in one piece. Oh, ho, ho, ho. no it isn't. This piece is notorious for breaking right along this seam. One of two things happen. One, either this piece breaks from this piece or the teeth inside here get completely eaten up. I got the reverse planetaries to remove. So once you have that snap ring out, you basically just push this piece in and then pull it out. Boom. Pull these guys out. So yeah, I started pushing on what looks like a snap ring here. And as I'm beating this thing in, this whole thing is coming out. So I should be able to pull it out at this point, I hope. There it is. So the last thing that I have left is this piece, which requires a tool. This might be a little bit difficult to film, but I have to take this tool, which I could have just made, and I have to depress that spring. And right in the center, there's a snap ring in there. So what this tool lets you do is depress the piston so you can pull this tiny little snap ring out of there. Not too bad. Without that tool, I don't know how you would do it. So once you get this snap ring off, this piece will come out. To get the low reverse clutch piston out, you're going to take some compressed air and you're going to give it a nice little puff right there. And that thing will pop right up. So at this point, I got everything cleaned up and everything's dismantled as far as the main assemblies. Got this thing all nice and clean, ready to go back together. In the next video, I'm going to inspect all these pieces, take them all apart, and rebuild all these sub-assemblies. Because there's a ton of them.